everybody, it's Marty from Aspect LED. Today we're going to talk about how to use Aspect LED's products in a pergola system. We're going to take a look at all of the products used, considerations specifically for using them with pergolas, the installation, and how to control it. So let's start by taking a look at which products you would use. First, let's talk about strip lights. A great option when it comes to strip lights is Aspect LED's RGBW W-Series strip light in ultra bright in the waterproof version. This strip light is rated at 5.5 watts per foot. A reel is 16.4 feet long, so a total reel is 90 watts. These are rated at 450 lumens per foot. It's a great option to really light up a pergola. Next, let's talk about controllers. We are going to be using the Aspect LED Z-Series receiver. This Z-Series receiver allows multiple receivers to be controlled by one four-zone remote or a three-zone wall controller. Each receiver is rated at 192 watts. Now let's talk about power. This system will need a power supply, and a great option is the Aspect LED 250-watt non-dimmable power supply. This is really great because if you take the 80% rule, which 80% of 250 is 200, that works out really well with a Z-Series controller, which is rated at 192, and this would power two of the RGBW strips, which equal out to about a load of 180 watts. Another thing I wanna point out, and this is a pro tip, if you stick with using one power supply consistently on all of your pergolas, you can carry a spare in your service vehicle and always have the right power supply for your needs. Now that we've looked at which products we're going to use, let's look at some considerations when using strip lights in a pergola system. The first thing we need to decide is where we're going to locate the power supply and the controllers. On this particular pergola, we're going to locate them on the central beam chase. When you're locating the power supply, and the controller, you want to keep it in a serviceable area. For this reason, we're going to locate it at the very end of the beam chase so that it can be serviced from a ladder. After you've located your first power supply and controller, it's time to lay your first strip out in the gutter. We're going to run it directly out of the controller and unreel the full reel, which is 16.4 feet. As you can see here, the reel doesn't go all the way around. Because these reels have a maximum run length of 16.4 feet, when we want to add a second reel, we need to add lead wires. These lead wires need to be rated for something with the load, such as this strip light. This strip light is weighted at 90 watts of load. If you take 90 watts divided by the working voltage, which is 24 volts DC, that gives you a rating of 3.75 amps. Please consult a wire load chart for which gauge wire you need. If you are uncomfortable with this, please consult a professional electrician as they will know how to do this. Now that we're laying out this second reel of lights, you'll notice that we didn't use the full 16 feet. We chose to make it simple just to cut off the end of the strip light and seal it with RTV silicone and an end cap. Now that we have the first quadrant laid out, we can lay a second power supply and controller into the beam chase. We're going to lay out the reel and then we need to add extension wires to get the second part because it's longer than one reel length, just like we did in the first quadrant. Once you do that, we have half of the gutter actually already wired up. We're going to take everything we did on this side of the pergola, mirror it over and just add two power supplies, two controllers and four more strips. And now we have the entire gutter illuminated with strip lights. Another option if you're installing a pergola is if you have tracks for a screen or something like that, you may have the option to add additional strip lights along the sides. In this case, we're installing strips in the tracks and across the top of the beams. When we do this, we're running them all to a central location and then running a lead wire. You do need to account for voltage drop on the wire, so we took the total wattage of all of the strip lights brought them to one location, and then calculated the gauge of wire needed to run up to the power supply and controller that we added into the beam chase. Let's talk a little bit more about voltage drop. When you have voltage drop, you do not want to go over 
As a rule of thumb, I don't like to go over 5% just to account for human error. When you're doing voltage drop runs, make sure you're accounting for the full length of the wires that you are using. In this installation, we chose to have each corner of the gutter be in one zone and then for each track area to be its own zone. This was to keep it simple for the end user. If you want to use the power differently or distribute it differently, that is up to you. The RGBW strip lights do not have VHB tape or some si sort of adhesive tape as a mounting material. When you mount these, you need to use some sort of adhesive like RTV silicone. This will ensure that the strip lights are attached solidly to the tracks. After you have everything installed, the next thing we want to talk about is control. Before you proceed with the rest of the installation of your pergola, you want to be sure and test everything in the installation and that is working correctly. Please check out our playlist on how to use the various controls and to pair to multiple receivers. Thank you for watching this video on how to use strip lights in a pergola system. We cover all the details you need to know, including which products to use, considerations when using strip lights in a pergola system, how to install them, and how to control them. If you have more questions, please reach out to one of our LED experts here at Aspect LED and light up that subscribe button.